Our next speaker is a theater artist who is going to talk and share his experience, not on theater, but on open data. So I will talk more about how they use open data to better manage floods in Assam and how they coordinate everything and how they do the logistics there. You know, Assam being a place where it floods usually He'll be talking more about how they use data to kind of like drive decisions behind how they better manage everything there. So inviting Sai to talk more about how they manage and coordinate activities during floods at Assam. He's a data engineer at Civic Data Lab. He has worked with governments and startups in deploying data science solutions to solve problems like disaster management, urbanization, and air pollution. So please welcome. Sai Krishna with a huge round of applause. I generally refrain about telling about my theater experience in tech conferences, but uh, they were successful in pulling it out of me. Uh, hello, everyone. I am Sai Krishna. Uh, I work as a data engineer at Civic Data Lab, uh, where I primarily work with geospatial data. Uh, and uh, over the last one and a half year, uh, I've been working on this project of, uh, uh, it's a management problem that we are trying to solve of managing floods in Assam and primarily using open data. Uh, and uh, I'm just uh, grateful to represent my work here, but uh, there are a lot of people are involved in uh, working on this project. A lot of people are working from Assam. Do, uh, they have done a lot of field work uh, collecting uh, data on how data is collected as well. And uh, I am just a data engineer uh, working from the comforts of my home uh, uh, like, and doing this analysis. But yes, a cred credit goes to a lot of people. And uh, particularly, I'm very happy about uh, sharing it. Like, this is the biggest uh, uh, talk I think I'm ever giving. I previously spoke at uh, meetups uh, in my city. But this is the biggest audience uh, I, I could ever think of. And I'm particularly happy that I'm talking about this topic. Uh, because my career started in a way with uh, flood ma like understanding flood management uh, in the city of Hyderabad. And, uh, I studied uh, mechanical engineering in uh, uh, NIT Karnataka. Uh, the, there's my professor, I don't know if he's in the audience, uh, uh, from my uh, university, so which is making me a little uh, nervous as well. Uh, nevertheless, uh, uh, yeah, I studied mechanical engineering uh, from NIT Karnataka where I did not study flood management. Uh, probably civil engineers uh, would have studied a little bit of it. Uh, so if not for FOSS, I wouldn't have been able to learn any of it. Uh, the first software I ever worked on is QGIS. And I could pick it up because, again, there is YouTube. Uh, you know, one of the earliest speakers uh, in this auditorium told about uh, YouTube. And uh, if not for YouTube, if not for FOSS, uh, I wouldn't have been able to make a career in uh, understanding floods and um, like, helping the governments on uh, how to manage floods. And uh, so deeply uh, personal, the topic is to me that I even ended up writing a poem uh, on it. Uh, it is a technical blog otherwise, I just, but I wanted to make sure that uh, you know, it's, it should start with something personal, so that that is something I penned uh, uh, on a technical blog. But these are the softwares uh, that I started with. I use QGIS for geospatial visualizations, uh, for hydrology, uh, understanding the hydrology. Uh, I used Open uh, Open Street Maps uh, to get base data, uh, base maps, uh, and also to do any kind of a pilot. Uh, this is my uh, go-to data source. I uh, used Selenium a lot. Uh, for web scraping. Uh, we have two star uh, data products uh, 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 in our work with Assam. And if not for Selenium, wouldn't, we wouldn't have been able to uh, you know, gather those data sets. And uh, obviously Python, uh, my primary scripting language. GDAL and Pangeo. Uh, GDAL is the base uh, open source project for anything related to geospatial. Uh, I learned a lot about it. Uh, and I've been able to build uh, ETL pipelines and do engineering uh, uh, only because of GDAL and the Pangeo project on Python. And with that, a uh, small context into uh, uh, the problem that we are trying to solve. We, first of all, we are not solving the problem of flood. Flood, uh, in a popular understanding, could be a disaster. Uh, but if you can just Google, uh, you can see that the flood is not just a disaster, but in few areas in Assam, it is a blessing as well. Uh, in Kaziranga, like areas surrounding Kaziranga, because a lot of uh, natural cycles revolve around flood. So we are not solving the problem of flood. We are, sol we are primarily attacking a management problem. Uh, people in Assam know that it is going to flood. 40% of uh, Assam is prone to floods. So we are not building a prediction uh, sort of an algorithm and say that it's going to flood tomorrow. Uh, they have been experiencing floods for years. 
but what we are trying to solve uh, is a different problem where uh, uh, Mr. Gyanendra Dev Tripathi, uh, he is the CEO of Assam State Disaster Management Authority. And the problem uh, we were uh, like explained is that uh, primarily uh, to manage flood every year, they have uh, huge funds of the order of uh, hundreds of crores. But uh, the allocation of these funds uh, currently uh, would happen on an ad hoc basis, uh, first come, first serve basis. Uh, primarily also because uh, no, it is an emergency situation. Uh, and in an emergency, the first person stepping uh, into your door would get, a, uh, you know, would get more attention. So that way, a lot of flood relief, uh, flood management is happening on an ad hoc, first come, first serve basis. But they do have a lot of data. Some uh, collect something called FRIMS, uh, it's flood related informa uh, uh, information management system, uh, where they collect on a very day-to-day uh, -day basis uh, granular information on how many people got affected, how many houses got damaged, uh, how many animals uh, got affected, et cetera. There are a huge number of variables that they are collecting. But uh, they needed someone, uh, they, they needed people to make sense of this data and make this uh, like flood management, primarily allocation of these funds, a little more thoughtful. Uh, I've just uh, like come from a talk uh, where Professor Anupam Guha spoke about uh, you know, uh, data-driven decisions and all. So I, I, we are not primarily also building a data-driven decision tool per se. Uh, uh, the decision is ultimately taken uh, by a human, uh, and there are political uh, considerations also involved. But we are just trying to add a little more thought uh, into those decisions uh, by collecting by, by the data sets that they have been collecting, uh, which are again um, the two primary important data sets that we have open sourced is one the losses and damages data, which is the FRIMS data that I have just told, where uh, we again there's a lot of uh, damages data uh, that they are, the government is uh, collecting, and we are just trying to structure them and open source them and make it interoperable with other variables. And then there is a government fiscal response, uh, where this is another important uh, data set that we could uh, open source, uh, where uh, public procurement is one of the most uh, important uh, uh, government expenditures. So budget is one thing. On budget, you would just know what is the target expenditure that the government has on, on any particular scheme. But when you actually study the tenders, you will know how much money has actually gone. So. Uh, our team has actually scraped, uh, uh, like we got a permission to do that. So we scraped across uh, the Assam tenders website and we got to know, uh, we just got a list of all the tenders uh, that the Assam government, state government has uh, issued. And uh, we employed a few logics to understand uh, this could be like keyword patterns and all. But we saw which of these tenders are related to floods. We got it reviewed and uh, we tried to geotag uh, each tender to one particular uh, region, revenue circle in Assam. Revenue circle is a unit where uh, flood-related uh, decision-making happens. So we try to uh, tag each tender to uh, these revenue circle units to just to get a geospatial distribution of uh, the fund distribution uh, that has been happening so far. But uh, obviously these two variables were, were uh, very important uh, from the government perspective because they have been Collecting it, they, ha they have these data sets. But for a little more thought into the decision, we wanted to add a few more variables. Uh, we added set uh, satellite and weather data, uh, ranging from, so from Bhuvan, for example, we have flood inundation data uh, and rainfall data, a lot of variables from satellite and weather uh, related variables. We added uh, demographic vulnerability. It can be as uh, uh, a common variable like population to sex ratio, et cetera, we added a, a couple of variables from uh, demographic vulnerability. And access to infrastructure can be a count of schools, roads, uh, uh, railway, et cetera. So we gathered all these variables and uh, created a system where, so the system which we have built is called uh, Intelligent Data Solution uh, for Disaster Risk Reduction. So that is a data solution we, are, uh, we have proposed to the government. And we have gathered all the variables uh, that we could uh, collect, uh, made them interoperable, uh, and aggregated these va variables currently to the level of revenue circle. Uh, with better data, probably we can aggregate them to the level of village, and that would be even more beneficial. But right now, it is at a revenue circle level. And uh, from after that level, uh, there is an analytics page uh, that we want to build, which will, uh, again, 
put more thought into the decision making. Pe uh, people who are taking the decisions can take help of the analytics. And also for anyone uh, who just wants to have a look at the data set, there is a data listing page. And we are envisaging it not as a single platform for a single state. Uh, uh, we are envisaging it more as a digital public good where uh, uh, IDS DRR will be a framework for uh, uh, any data solution for disaster risk reduction in India. And uh, our approach right now is to work with uh, Assam, Odisha, and Himachal Pradesh. And the framework will remain the same. Uh, for every state, there would be a data listing page. And obviously, uh, what data would be, like for example, Assam has this FRIMS data. Other state might not have it, might have something better than that as well. So what goes into it would be different, but the overall framework would uh, be more or less the same. And uh, analytical page is something uh, like this is an MVP which uh, we are just trying to build, where uh, for each uh, revenue circle or a district, we would know, uh, we would get a sense of analytics like what is the demographic vulnerability, overall demographic vulnerability in that particular revenue circle or in that particular district. Uh, uh, and we would compare this, and again, the aim is that uh, this will help. Uh, when the decision is taken about uh, how much money has to go into a particular revenue circle, uh, if we can uh, help that, uh, you know, a revenue circle that is really in need of money, if it can get more money, like I think uh, that is a good success uh, we can count for. And uh, the impact story so far, uh, as I've said, we have been working on this uh, for uh, close to more than two years. And few impact stories that we could collect so far are uh, uh, in March 20, uh, 2023, or when the financial year uh, ended. So we were just looking into the, the minutes of meetings or, or like of the state executive committee where uh, the decisions on fund allocation takes place. And uh, we were happy to like see that, okay, like based on uh, whatever the, and, and, uh, the data model was telling, uh, people were using this uh, to get a sense of uh, like where more money is needed and uh, fund distribution was happening uh, more in those lines compared to previous times when uh, th there was a lot of first come first serve basis as I have told. And uh, also in this process we were able to uh, uh, improve the disaster planning in a sense that uh, we are not just identifying what tender is a flood related tender, uh, but based on the keywords uh, we are also able to uh, tag them as, you know, for example a tender could be money is probably spent more on uh, disaster relief, which is an immediate relief after a disaster, uh, but not on preparedness. But if we want more money to be spent on, you know, making a state or a region more uh, disaster resilient, we would want more money to be spent on uh, the preparedness measures rather than the uh, immediate relief. So these indicators are also helping us just track these indicators and just know what is the quality of spending, not just uh, the uh, total amount of spending. And uh, recently, uh, again, this process has helped us, the tagging of tenders is helping us just to uh, create a, a standard of, you know, what, what is a, like, even now, now Assam is the third state in the country uh, that has released a green budgeting. And green budget is, uh, like, just to put it simply, every budget item uh, in the state budget, uh, we can tag uh, if it is related to, uh, you know, climate friendliness, if it is related to climate resilience and all. So this tagging experience that we have gained, again, uh, uh, with, with this project is uh, ha has helped us as is the uh, fi uh, finance department in Assam in uh, preparing the green budget as well. And uh, a more personal impact story for me is uh, I worked on this project, I wrote a blog uh, uh, and uh, I shared it on Twitter. Uh, someone from Kerala, uh, he's a data journalist working on a completely different problem. Uh, he's, I think he was working on uh, just understanding uh, temperature in uh, like change of tenor, temperature in Kerala. He found some piece of code from my code, like I wrote it on floods and he was working on temperature. And he said, you know, this helped me. And I think things like these make me, or like motivate mo me more to work on open source things when people share uh, like whatever has worked for them uh, from what I've done. Uh, and uh, with these data sets, now uh, we have sourced all the data, uh, data sets for the last five years now. And uh, now looking forward to engage more uh, with, uh, with people who can make sense of these data sets. Uh, we work with the uh, government agencies uh, in, uh, like for example, uh, our colleague has gone to a water department, water resources department, where now we work with them in uh, explaining the tender data so that they can better plan their tenders um, uh, thing. We are working with a couple of students from New York University uh, 
uh, in again data is ready uh, and they are students of uh, they are doing their masters in data science so we are looking forward for their collaboration on if they can add more insight and uh, we have done a data dialogue in gauhati last year where uh, the data sets again again are open to public inviting journalists researchers uh, to help us find more insights from the data uh, and finally uh, uh, this is the right time for me to also say so like uh, as i have said data is ready and uh, next week we are doing a deep dive workshop uh, in delhi uh, on on the entire process uh, this is a trailer uh, of what we have done so far but uh, this we are going to have a two hour discussion on uh, how we have dealt the entire work for the last two years so uh, this is a link for registration if anyone is interested uh, and if you are based in delhi please to try to come uh, i think that's the end of it thank you